Hello everybody and welcome to part three of our restoration. Today we're on the engine, the beautiful little Briggs & Stratton Industrial Plus. All eight horsepower of her. I've had a few ideas and I've had a look around in our scrap shed for, to see what we can find to be able to sort out the air filter and exhaust issue to be able to lower this down so that our bonnet can be back how it should be. So we can lower the exhaust here, which I think is going to be reasonably easy because we should just be able to take that cover off and the exhaust to be low enough. My concern there is, is it going to be too close to the bonnet so then it gets hot and underneath. So shall we take off that muffler and let the exhaust come out the side and up like a traditional tractor? Make it look quite cool. I know it's not original. A little flapper on the top going pop, 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 pop. I think it'll be quite neat. The harder bit is the air filter housing. So we're just gonna whip that off a minute and then we'll have another look. So there we have it. We have our nice little carb there. The biggest issue we've got is the choke lever obviously works here. I've looked around to see if we've got a different butterfly that we can work into here to have a different one so we can put on the cable onto there instead. We'll make it work. We're good enough for that. It will be fine. But I think we're going to have to cut this up to be able to lower that down. The way we could do that is, obviously we'll place the air filter, but that clips in here on the tabs on the side. Nice thing about it, the tabs are all the same spacing. So we could lower that down one tab to there, which then putting that back on, brings that level down to the same height as the exhaust. So if that is the same height as the exhaust, then our bonnet's gonna close. Issues, of course there's some issues. We've got a gap in there. We can fill that in with some, we can build that up and put, fill it in with silicon around the outside so the air filter still gets a good seal. Last thing we want is holes where there should be an air filter. And also at the bottom. So that'll be the case, we'll put a panel over here and build that in. So I'm gonna do that off camera and we're gonna build that so that we can make that work. We'll then cut the top of this off all the way around there. So we'll lose the top of that but that will bring that level down so that it'll all fit in under the bonnet. The flap can be closed and welded and we should hopefully work out a way to be able to make all that go together. But I'm gonna do that off camera as you don't wanna watch me fiddling around with that, do you? So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so that's one job I've gotta do. Easy, easy, Shh, stay there. Right, the other one, right, I'm gonna whip that exhaust cover off a second just so we can have a look at that. Here we have got a little tiny Six mil bolt. I don't have a six mil spanner. <laughs> gonna go get one. Adjustable will do. So, I have glasses. I can't see, I'm blind as a bat. You're lucky I can even do this. By the way, love Milwaukee stuff. Of course, in all our power stuff is Milwaukee drills, grinders. It's all Milwaukee, we love it. Don't worry, we know you. there's probably some Makita fans out there and Dewalt fans and even probably some Ryobi fans. But anyway, doesn't matter. We like Milwaukee, let us know what you like. Why is it on American made products, every single nut and bolt is a different size? You get Imperial, you get Metric, you get in between, you get everything. So down here, right, we've got a six mil bolt. Up here, you've got a 10 mil bolt, or three eighths could have been, whatever I was put in worked. And then round here, you've got another one. Find it. It's a half inch. What a surprise. Now I've lost my half inch socket. This isn't going great. I'll find it. Bad one. <laughs> That's quarter inch, not three eighths. So we're just gonna find a 13 mil. So we have got that down. See, that's down to the right level. Engine, the bonnet, engine, bonnet. Bonnet will fit over that and the flap will be able to be welded down and close. We've just got to work out that way of keeping that air filter lower. Quite confident it'll be fine. And everything like that. We know the engine runs like a dream, so we're now just gonna quickly strip off all the other bits, put them into our piles that need to be in for um, shot blasting and powder coating. Go from there. So I'm gonna whiz them off. Look at this bodge job. Look at this, eh? 
So like I said before, they wired this switch in so they could use the one on the dash. Fine. But for some reason, what a farmer job that is, isn't it? Proper farmer job. So we're just going to cut that. It's just nasty. Horrid looking. Taken the majority of it off. We've, we're going to try and take it up fully off. Got some grub screws and some deep dark holes on there, holding that on. Probably going to need to get our air hammer. Love a bit of air hammer to be able to get that fully off. I suspect he's fairly well on there because if this engine was changed in when was it? '97 ish, thereabouts. And that's been on there 20 plus years. So probably get to get our undo that, get the air hammer on it. We should just walk it off. If not, good old oxycetylene will be fine to be able to warm that up and pull it off. We'll just undo the scrub screws, hopefully, he says. Too big, still too big, too small. Traction, but probably too much. It's a little bit of play. So what a surprise, it's an American engine it has an Imperial Allen head on. There we go, engine is stripped down. We're gonna get, we're gonna paint that black, by the way, just cause black is cool. Absolutely winning color. All these little bits are gonna be, these extra little bits are all going to be black. Even the fuel tank bracket is going to be black. That can go with that scrap. And um, yeah, just clean up the alloy stuff. And then we're just going to clean up the engine the best we can. We don't want to strip it apart. It works perfectly. As much as I'd love to do an engine rebuild, or at least a valve job. Love a valve job. But we don't need to. It's all good we've seen it it works it runs it starts it fires it smokes it pokes it does what we need it to do so we're going to leave that as it is by cleaning it all up nicely also off camera between part two and part three so you could call it 2.5 off camera i've cleaned up the gearbox with a wire brush and wire wheel i've sorted out all the tin work so that is now looking pretty swish all ready to go off the shop blasters next week we are booked in to go in and sort that out. We're gonna get everything shot blast and powder coated what we're happy with. We were then gonna bring the, one thing we're not gonna powder coat yet is the bonnet. The bonnet is not gonna get powder coated until we're gonna bring the bonnet back, all shot blasted, fit it on, make sure it's right, weld it up, make sure it all fits. And then we're gonna take it back and they're gonna then powder coat it then. And the beautiful gold that we keep mentioning and that will sort that out. But I don't want to get it all powder coated and then find out, actually James, you've got to cut this bit or weld this bit or make an adjustment there for it to fit properly. I think it's gonna be best to do it that way around, although it's a little bit more traveling, but it'll look good on camera. And that's what it's all about. Not original on the mower, but when we're on the mower, when we're testing it in part one, you saw me blipping the old um, governor over here. Like that to make it rev because i'm a child sometimes about like that but i think it's going to make sense to have a foot throttle on it rather than a hand throttle hand throttle was great because it used to have a mowing deck on it you needed to rev it at a certain amount of revs we're not going to have a mowing deck on it we're not going to have a rotavator on the back or anything else powered it's just going to be a tractor a tug a trailer puller however many other names you can call it that's what we're going to do so we're just going to have a hand the foot throttle so you can drive along you change gear bah, bah, that'd be fun Whereas if you had a hand throw, it's just all revs and no fun. So cool, that's what we're gonna do. There we have the engine in bits, as far as we need to go. We're gonna clean it all up, sort it all out, shot blast it, paint it, sticker it, do what we've gotta do. And right, so that's the engine sort of done. Let's move on to something else. And here we are. So what we've got now is all the bits and pieces that need some work. We're not just doing a paint restoration, we're doing a full restoration. Well, a full, mm. 99% oh, I reckon anyway so we've got lots of bits that need some new little wiggly bits and pointy bits and bearing bits and <laughs> bits anyway so we've got bits that need extra work bits we need to take to the workshop to take apart bits that need new track rod ends look we've got a it's got a, like a wiggly knob on the end it shouldn't be it should be more like that one it doesn't wiggle so much but they're all going to be replaced. If I can find the proper ones, the right size, whatever, we'll make it fit. But we need some more of them. Track rod ends, tie rod ends. I don't know what they're called. That's probably some technical term. Track rod end. Track rod end. That's the one. So we've got other bits here. All needs cleaning up. This is the 
brake bit, I think, on that. Yeah, it's a brake bit. So that's got a little brake pad on the end there, which looks a bit mushed. So we're gonna see what we can do on that, whether we just leather, layer up some nice pieces of leather, or I'll try and get some leather from somewhere, or maybe take my belt off and use that. Who knows, we'll work it out. And there's another bit of leather on that bit of brake bit, which goes around the old clutchy bit, which is on the gearbox, on the end of the gearbox still. That clutchy bit goes around on the gearbox there, that brake comes down and grips it. So that needs a new bit of leather there. Someone's replaced it once before with a few rivets. We'll do the same, but just a nice new bit on there. So the brakes need re-leathering. And all of the linkages, so this is the mower linkage. We're still gonna put it back underneath in one form or another underneath. And then we've got the old Dubrima what's it which lifts it up. We're still gonna put that back on because I think it looks quite cool. Never know, we might need it one day. Just for a bit of leverage on something. Anyway, we're gonna get all that cleaned up. We're gonna spray that by hand because even with a heat gun, I don't think we're gonna get that off considering it's been there for 57 years. Did we decide 57? 57. Right, the main pulley on the main drive shaft is you ready for the bearing movement? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. movie, movie. So yeah, we're gonna take that apart and pop a bearing in there somehow. I don't know, but we need to get that off first. And that's gonna have to be, I think we're gonna have to heat and quench that off and get me old air hammer on the end of it to walk her off. It'll work. Uh, steering bar and gear, pinion, whatever you wanna call it, is on the end of that. Get all that cleaned up nicely. Not gonna obviously paint that because it's gotta slide back up through the steering slide back up through the steering bit column, column, I'll do, to go on there. Uh, the battery tray needs a new bit here because it got a bit of rust on there, so we're gonna have to tidy that up a little bit, clean everything up on the wire wheel, make it all look pretty, and then obviously this will go to get shot blasted next week. Um, any bits I've missed? We've got a bit of linkage, which is obviously something that someone has made up, cobbled together, had a bit of fun with the drill to make it, make it go as well as planned and um, we'll try and make them a better one, but we'll get there. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. More track rod ends on there, on the, that's on the, that's on the pedal, that's from the pedal, that bit. that's what makes it do something. So that needs a new one on there. Um, these are, these just need cleaning up. These are the little wheel bushes that hold the front wheels on, which came off really easily with an Allen key, however many years ago that was. Anyway, gearbox. Gearbox transmission base plate. We've scraped off all that lovely, what do we call it? Lovely brownness, I think I used as the term. Under there, scrape that off, that's gone. So no longer see of our lovely mushy stuff underneath. Um, clear that up. Good news, I've saved the gaskets off the gearbox. Transmission. Can everyone stop questioning me on what it, whether it's a gearbox or a transmission? It's both, depends where you're from. Anyway, so that is the one off the top that goes on the top of the transmission and that's the one off the bottom. But I managed to save them. They're cool, they work, they're good. Otherwise I was gonna have to use silicon because there's no way I'd find that again. What have we got? Anything else? No, I think that's it. So we're gonna clean all that up, sort it all out. I'll show you what I've done in part four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, joking, it's not gonna be that long. But we've got some shafts, everything out, clean it all up, make it tidy. So that is the end of part three. I apologize, it's only been a little short one. Some of you might like that, but hopefully it's been funny and informative, sort of, about what we're doing, where we're going, where we've been, where we've come from. And I'm gonna do the rest off camera on here, not the rest of the project, but the rest of getting all this sorted out, getting all the wobbly and wibbly bits sorted, cleaning it all up, because you don't want to see me sweat and dribble and swear on camera. I'll just show you the results. So I'm gonna see you in part four. See you later.